Hello everyone, it's your host who might be the most insane, the Prince of Death, the demonic demigod, Lucius Svartwolf Helsin, and this is the Son of Hell Show, news with a rational heathen perspective. Well, for our inaugural Son of Hell Show, uh, we've got a few topics here today. This is not going to be like the two previous broadcasts I've done on my channel, which were mostly just philosophy time. This is actual news. Mostly with my little bit of uh, interpretive perspective on it. Uh, today's topics are going to be right-wing Jimmy John's forbids employees from making competitor sandwiches, the first also true temple in 900 years, a minor review of Dracula Untold, and apparently Barbie is making more headlines as she is appearing as the goddess Kali, which has made a few Hindus angry. Well, first we're going to start off with the Jimmy John thing. And this is based off an article. All links shall be pasted in the com in the uh, information section on the video uh, by Raw Story. And I'm guessing from the headline, this is of course a rather politically motivated piece, uh, since the headline is "Right Wing Jimmy John's forbids employees from making competitor sandwiches for two years." Uh, this is apparently part of a non-competition clause that Jimmy John's makes its employees sign. Again, I just want to state by or start by stating that non-competition clauses are nothing new. Uh, lots of businesses have them. It's mostly to keep people from taking corporate secrets or practices at that time and immediately going to a competitor and selling out those secrets, uh, which could hurt the original business. So it's a fair practice. However, what's drawing the ire of people here today is apparently that this non-competition clause is going all the way down to the bottom guys who make the sandwiches and don't really know corporate secrets. Actually, they probably barely know the recipes. No offense to any Jimmy John or other sub sandwich workers out there. I love the food, and you're as capable as everybody else in this one, but, you know, we've all been there. Uh, apparently... And I'm quoting here. According to the agreement, employees must agree that, further quotation, that during his or her employment with the employer for a period of two years after he or she will not have any direct or indirect interest in or perform services for any business which derives more than 10% of its revenue from selling submarine, hero type, deli style, pita, and or wrapped or rolled sandwiches, and which is located with three miles of any such other Jimmy John sandwich shops, end quote. So, I can sort of see the problem with this one here. You're basically taking minimum wage workers who unfortunately don't have a lot of marketable skills and basically saying, yeah, you can't use the skills and experience we've given you for the next two years at all. Which, you know... Two years is a long time. Experience fades. You can't really argue, oh, well, two years ago I did this job. I'm experienced in it now because stuff changes in two years. So you're directly harming the potential earning power of these employees. Honestly, I'm going to say that's probably not the most honorable business practice. Now, there may be more to it. I am fully admitting that I'm probably getting this from a very biased site, writing a very biased story. But on the surface of it, that quote is directly from the employee agreement so and non-competition clause. So it's kind of hard to argue with their own words. You're really hurting people here. Especially in this down economy because, you know, if you leave Jimmy John's, well, why not go work for Subway? You already know how to make sandwiches. You can say, hey, that's less time to train me. And I've got, you know, X amount of time experience on this. Pay me more money. You know, because people got to make a living here. And let's face it, just because they know how to make a Jimmy John sandwich, you know, it's a sandwich. It's fixins on bread. We do this at home. You know, all Jimmy John's does is make it more convenient for me. And I don't have to worry about the lead going bad in my fridge. But that's a side point. So, you know. Uh, apparently ongoing with all part of this is uh, uh, Jimmy John's employees are attempting to unionize. There were some unfair practices. 
And the final statement from the article is about uh, the owner of Jimmy John's, uh, James Liautoud. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It's L-I-A-U-T-A-U-D. And yes, I am aware of the irony of a guy with a name like mine being unable to pronounce strange names, but, you know, there we go. Apparently he's an avid big game hunter, which I really don't see what has to do with um, non-competition clauses. But hey, you know, he's a hunter. And that's bad, apparently, I'm guessing. So yeah, I will I will link down to that in the section. Uh, the next one, one of personal interest to me, is the first heathen Osatru temple in 900 years. Now, uh, this article is in uh, the mbl.is. Um, I believe it is an Icelandic uh, newspaper slash website. So, yay! News from one of the old countries of my people. Uh, apparently, a hof, or temple, being designed by uh, Magnus Jensen, uh, is going to be the first official uh, Osatru, or Norse pagan temple, in Northern Europe for about 900 years. So, as a heathen, this is awesome. My religion got reformed under the auspices of Sveinbjörn Bjentenson of Iceland uh, back in 1972. That was the official start of Also True over in Iceland. Uh, I think the date in America might be a little bit different, but we're all pretty much following in his example. Um, apparently, I believe space has been dedicated for it, but they're still waiting on a building license due to uh, changes in the design of the Hoff at least according to the Goth or Gothi, i.e. High Priest, of the Osatru Society. Uh, the building's going to take place in Osjokluth Reykjavik in Iceland. Um, one of the nice things about Iceland is if you're an officially recognized religion, I do believe they have to give you space to build a temple. So... They're officially recognized. They are getting government uh, awarded space to build their temple. Although I think they have to come up with the funding for building it themselves. Uh, I don't see anything about a donation to help build it, so I'm guessing they're doing okay uh, as far as funding goes. So hopefully, hopefully here in the next couple of years, we should uh, we should have a temple, and that's going to be awesome. And I'll just have to try and make my way to Iceland and go check that out. Okay, let's see here. Um, ah, my notes changed. Okay. A uh, little bit of a review on Dracula Untold. I went and saw it uh, this weekend. Um, this is, of course, the new Universal uh, Legendary Pictures about Dracula's origins. Uh, starring the guy, I can't remember his name, I think it's like Luke Evans, who uh, is in the Hobbit movies. Great, excellent actor. He does a wonderful job in this movie. I'm not going to give away any more anything in the way of plot points because I want people to go see it. Um, so spoilers are not happening in this review. That being said, the acting by pretty much everybody in there was great. His wife was a wonderful actor. His son, played by a younger child actor, um, was good. Not whiny or over the top or terribly acting like a lot of child actors do uh the master vampire was a master vampire he was masterful at that one and the enemy sultan who he ends up fighting was played brilliantly and i forget who the actor was in that one but he was familiar to me i apologize for not having the names on that uh my bad but again i'm going to give it nine out of ten stars at this point for a quick review uh, definitely go see it. If you have any opinions, drop them in the comment box. I would love to hear them. Uh, I will say this. Uh, Dracula Untold is apparently the start of a rebirth of the Universal Monster franchise. So with any luck, we'll start seeing the monsters coming back and even getting crossovers. So I suppose we can thank Marvel for starting off the idea that, hey, multiple movie crossovers can be profitable. 
So, yay on that one. We might even see, you know, Dracula meets Frankenstein's monster and stuff like that, which I can only imagine would be amazing. Especially considering, from what I hear in the new Frankenstein movie they're putting out, James McAvoy is playing the Doctor and Daniel Radcliffe is playing Igor, so I can only imagine the hilarity that will occur in that one. Uh, let's see here. A uh, story I didn't mention uh, in the beginning, but it got made into the notes, is uh, Jennifer Lawrence uh, appeared this month, or in this month's issue of Vanity Fair. It actually just popped out today. So I got a quick look at it. I'd read about it before. I have an article about some of the stuff I heard she was saying on my blog. I will give a link to that one as well, if I can. Uh, the basic idea, though, that she's come out with is um well she's pushing the story that anybody who has looked and i'm i'm just gonna quote here quote anybody who looked at those pictures you're perpetuating a sexual offense end quote right okay miss lawrence i respect you as an actor and a professional i understand you have been the victim of a crime But making the broad statement, based on no legal precedent that I'm aware of, that anybody looking at those stolen pictures is committing a sexual offense is wrong. Okay? It's not illegal to look at stolen artifacts. It may be, it's definitely illegal to steal these things. Being in possession of them, knowing or unknowing, is certainly a gray area that oftentimes does come up with, you know, probably illegal. But just looking at the evidence of crime, which is what these pictures on the internet are, is not the crime itself, and it is not a crime in and of itself. Otherwise, anybody who viewed pictures of, a, you know, a theft or a murder or anything like that, would be guilty of those crimes, which is essentially the argument that you're making, as I understand it. Now, I haven't read the full article. I don't know if there's more context to that quote. If anybody has, let me know. I'll be happy to make uh, amendments in any further episodes. I will probably try and even read this thing myself. But I understand you're hurt. And I understand that when somebody's hurt, they want to lash out, but and I explained this better in my blog, I guess, and I'm going to right now because this is just a short, short show that really, okay, you're trying to criminalize looking at stolen goods, and you're trying to claim that it's a sexual offense because the stolen goods happen to be nude photos of you, okay? Theft happened. Nobody is disagreeing with that. Those who committed the theft should be punished. But people looking at it, looking at these images, which aren't even the original images which were stolen, mind you. These are, you know, copies. If you want to get technical, they don't even exist because they're just bits of code that represent an image that is manufactured whenever the computer reads that code. So you're talking about something that's been copied dozens of times over is nowhere near the original. So, you know, that's getting a bit metaphysical or something like that. So I'm not going to go further on that tangent. But you're basically saying, hey, you've looked at this. You've essentially committed a rape. Well, no. I've seen the evidence of a crime. It's That's like saying somebody was attacked left in an alley and then the person who comes by and sees it is now responsible for a secondary sexual attack even though they committed no attack and probably felt that you know such a thing was wrong however attractive it was to see so i'm sorry miss lawrence but just taking you on that quote alone and maybe vanity fair is trying to sensationalize this thing all out but I'm afraid you're wrong on that one. It is not a sexual offense to look at these pictures. Okay, so, um, topic number five, 
which is going to be the last one here, I guess, uh, which was Barbie as a goddess Kali angers Hindus. Uh, this article is in the India Today, uh, or on the India Today website, from, I think, India. Uh, this is apparently in relation to something, a couple of Argentinian artists by the name of Marianella Pirelli and Paul Paolanini. Paolanini? Yeah, I think Paolanini. Uh, who've put up uh, an exhibition series in Argentina called Barbie the Plastic Religion. Uh, one of which uh, is featuring Kali. Uh, who, despite being a Barbie doll, is actually depicted as she's shown in a lot of Hindu mythology and artwork. Um, yeah, the expedition is happening in Buenos Aires. Uh, it's set to open October 11th, so I guess it's been out for about four days now. Uh, the artist presented various avatars of Barbie and her male companion, Ken, so... Hey, gender equality. We're getting both sexes up here. Uh, a photograph of the Kali Barbie, and I'm quoting here, on the artist's website shows the doll holding up a severed head, and the toy box has a symbol of Om and Jai Kali Ma in Hindi, printed on it, end quote. Uh, I'm not sure what Jai Kali Ma is, but I'm guessing that's the standard um, praise for her. Uh, she, however, is generating quite a bit of upset. Um, apparently a gentleman by the name of Rajan Zed, who is a notable interfaith leader, uh, done things such as pray, led prayer in the U.S. Senate, uh, is quoted as saying, Hindus welcome the art world to immerse in Hinduism, but taking it seriously and respectfully, and not for refashioning Hinduism concepts and symbols for personal agendas. Barbification of Kali is simply improper, wrong, and out of place. Uh, end quote. Uh, this is kind of reminding me of the thing with Smite, the uh, online uh, battle arena game, which I am completely addicted to. Uh, apparently, at one point, uh, their depiction of Kali drew quite a lot of unrest in the Hindu community. Uh, so they went back and changed some of her modeling outfit and her attacks. Now, there's a bit of irony in this because Smite goes to fairly great lengths to study the lore of the different gods they put in that game and present them and their attacks as accurately to the mythology as possible. So when they went back and changed Kali, they took her from being depicted very similarly to the mythology with very mythology-based attack names to a much more modest um, model and very toned down attack names which according to Kali players who loved her and loved the mythology you know was kind of insulting because hey you just neutered the goddess of blood and death all because some Hindu people were offended and I am completely sympathetic to Hindu people being offended God knows as a member of Asatru lately there's been some stuff of our own that's been kind of offending. Uh, I'm, of course, referencing to the great uh, race lift of Heimdall back in the first Thor movie. Uh, I will go on record to stating Idris Elba was an amazing Heimdall. I can't really imagine anybody else playing him. But, you know, you are changing the ethnic nature of one of my deities. That's a little bit insulting, especially given the fact that, hey, you know, let's go and make... Uh, let's say, Anansi the African Spider God into a white guy, yeah, that would that would get suitable and appropriate cries of, you know, racism and other stuff. And, of course, the most recent Marvel Comics thing, uh, the issue of which apparently dropped out this week, where Thor becomes a woman. Because, you know, changing the gender of a god of a entire group of people for the sake of politics is, of course, appropriate. So, I can understand, hey, it's Barbie. You know, Barbie's gotten a lot of flack over the ages. She's considered largely inappropriate by nearly every politically correct organization out there. 
and a few that are politically incorrect, and a few that are moral guardians. Barbie gets a lot of hate. A lot of hate. So I can understand, you know, the barbification of Kali. I can see that as insulting. Now looking at the model, and I'm going to... I'm going to see if I can get an image to put in the video or whatnot, if just to save people trouble from linking. Uh, I mean, the model is accurate to mythological pictures, so I'm, I'm not seeing much to take offense there. But again, I'm not a Hindu, so I'm just a, a Norse heathen. Different religion, different standards, I guess. Uh, apparently, in relation to this at the art exhibition, Barbie and Ken as the Virgin Mary and crucified Jesus Christ, as well as other saints, is also draw drawing sharp criticism. So, you know, make of that what you will. Apparently, you know, everybody's everybody's getting offended about this one. So, you know, good on that. I guess I guess that means this exhibition is true art because true art offends or something like that. So. Well done. You're getting press out there. I'm sure a lot of people are going to go see this exhibition. Uh, I certainly wouldn't mind seeing pictures on the web of it. So, there we go. Uh, that's been our first Son of Hell show. And, uh, if I do say so myself, I have managed to make it through without completely bollocksing it up. So, uh, if you have comments... Throw them down there. If you've got stories you want to hear about or hear my opinion about or think I would be interested in, drop them in the comments. Let's, you know, make this something of a show. And, uh, again, I am Lucius Fartwolf Helson. I am the son of hell. And, uh, bid you all a wonderful day and hella bless. <laughs>